Hello everybody, this is Racer Kanana Nate, also known as David. Um, so the quick commentary I'm going to be doing today, um, I'm going to be having some Last of Us uh, gameplay in the background. Now the topic I'm going to be talking about, this can apply to any game, um, but as everyone on here knows, I'm a huge fan of The Last of Us, so I'm probably going to apply this topic to The Last of Us, just because it's really easy for me to use examples. Um, so I'm going to be talking about the, the concept of uh, reality versus fiction. So a lot of people say, you know, when they talk about video games, they say, oh, you know, it's just a game, um, it's not real life, blah, 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 blah. And that's true. Um, video games are not real life, you know, they're completely a fiction world and a fantasy, fantasy characters portrayed by actors and, uh, you know, special effects and everything's made on a computer, you know, digitally animated, and it's not real life. Um, but the thing about games is just like movies, um, especially people, I guess you could... Um, you could relate this to movies, um, so they're not real life, but they can they can make you feel um, very very real emotions, and you react to the the game or the movie as if it is real life, which um, which is crazy when something's powerful enough to do that. Like think about I'll, all right, I'll go to TV shows for example instead of uh, video games. I'll come back to video games, but uh, let's go to TV shows. So you're watching. Um, the Office, for example. That's a show I've been binge-watching recently. I'm actually almost done with it. I'm on season nine. Great show, by the way. Um, so say that you're binge-watching The Office. So when you turn it on on Netflix, you already know it's a show. You know everyone in there is an actor, and you know that they're all just reading lines they memorize, and the situation isn't really happening. They're all just doing it for money because their job, and they're being filmed by cameras, and the private moments aren't really private, and um, all the things that they say to each other they they're they didn't come up with they're not thinking it which is really weird because they're if you think about acting as a whole here's we're gonna go into a little bit of inception here so if you think of acting as a whole it's really it's a really weird profession and it's really weird that humans enjoy this right because we're sitting there and we're watching people do something um, but what they're doing is they're portraying real life scenarios but it's not really happening it's completely fabricated and why it's kind of weird to think about how um, how we get amusement and entertainment out of you know being fooled or I guess fooled into believing that what we're seeing is real so we all know we're watching a show yet when we see it we react as if it's a real situation if you kind of get what I'm saying so um, say that you're watching a movie right and you know it's a movie you've been watching this movie for two hours and it's a it's a war a war movie a World War two movie and it's really sad because the main character is, you know, bleeding out and he's, you know, saying something about, you know, tell my wife this and tell my kids this. And, and he's bleeding out and his buddy's like holding him like, no, no, come on, Sarge, you know, come on, Sarge, pull through. And he dies and he looks up at the sky and and the um, the guy that's over him holding him is, you know, crying and it's really touching. And everyone in the audience is tearing up and it's a really powerful movie. And everyone says that was a really good movie. But when you actually think about it and now I'm kind of ruining all the fun of movies I understand but it, just just follow me on this train of thought um, if you really think about it and look through it the guy that's dying isn't really dying he's pretending to die and just staring at the sky and the guy above him isn't really sad because that guy isn't really dead after they're done filming that shot they turn off the camera and then they you know stand up and walk away and that's what everyone says you know when you're watching a scary movie for example they say you know like yo, dude, calm down, like, it's just a movie, you know what I mean? But then at the same time, those same people uh, get really emotional and tear up and get sad when they're watching a sad movie, and no one goes, hey, man, stop crying, it's just a movie, you know what I mean? Like, it's weird, it's really, really weird, the whole idea. Um, like, look at other, other species, for example. Maybe it's just because humans are the smartest and we have such an awareness of self, but think of other species, for example. Uh, what's a close species? Chimpanzees. All right, we're going to go with chimpanzees. So imagine there's a bunch of chimpanzees sitting around in the forest, and they're staring at two other chimpanzees who are pretending to, you know, forage through the forest for food. They're not really finding food. They're just pretending to do it. And they run into all kinds of problems along the way. And the other chimpanzees are sitting around watching them, and they're laughing because they think it's funny that these guys are pretending to find food and pretending to get chased by a bear. And on the outside, you're like, why are they doing this? You know, this is a waste of time. They could be out, you know, gathering food or whatever. And I guess that's why it comes back to humans, why we do all these things that aren't necessarily necessary for surviving. You know, there's a difference between living and surviving. Um, like in The Last of Us, you know, 
Um, I actually have tattooed on my chest the, the saying, endure and survive. And that's not necessarily the slogan that I live by, but for not necessarily mankind, but life as in general, it endures and it survives, you know, and that's kind of like in The Last of Us, for example, that's uh, the mindset they're at. They don't have time for entertainment or uh, anything unnecessary, any love even, love gets in the way. I mean, throughout the game, you see the human side of them because they do have love. They do have funny moments. They do still try to have entertainment as much as they can, but that's just them being humans realistically not very many people participate in those kind of things because they're just trying to survive whereas humans nowadays in the real life in the real world um we're not at a post-apocalyptic stage we're at the stage where we're we're living you know we we aren't worried about surviving we're just worried about being happy and living and and not being bored you know which is crazy to think about how we're like animals out in the wild for example like a mouse out in the wild the mouse never cares if he's bored. The mouse is constantly, constantly foraging around for food, trying to avoid hawks, dodging down into his hole, feeding his babies, and that's all he does. And then he makes babies so those babies can live on and make babies, and those babies can live on and make babies so the mice never die out. And, and they eat the mice so they can feed their babies, so those babies can make more eagles, so they can hunt more mice and then make more eagles. And that's like the circle of life, you know? But humans are kind of weird. We're kind of different from most animals in that sense because, yes, humans are here, you know, to live, make children, have humans that follow them, that make children. Really, everything in life is determined when it goes down to its basic instincts. It's determined to continue its bloodline and continue its species. I don't know why that's the way the world works, that every species in the world is trying to kind of trump the other ones and every species in the world is trying to carry on. What if there was just a species that was like, that was like, you know what, we're just going to have fun, and we don't really care if there's more of us after. I mean, why does it matter to us? There's going to be other animals around. But that's not how it is. Every plant, animal, bacteria, archaea, and everything all wants to, ha you know, whether it's conscious or sub what, subconscious, not conscious, not like a conscious decision. Every species in the world wants to kind of, you know, carry on and, um, and you know, survive. And that's, that's really weird when you think about it. Humans are the only ones that are different where we have that purpose, but we don't really think about it. We are more here to have fun and make families and be happy. People, most people have families because it brings them happiness, not necessarily because they want the human, because they're like, it's not that people don't want the human race to continue. I mean, not very many people will say, oh yeah, I want humans to go extinct. But a lot of people have the mindset where like, I'm not gonna be around for it, you know, it doesn't bother me. The only reason why they might want the mankind to go on is because they're like, well, you know, I mean, I want my kids to grow up in a, in a happy world. Or people have kids because it makes them happy and they want to raise a family and it makes them feel good and it's what they've always wanted to do. Not necessarily because they have that basic survival instinct. And that's really weird. Um, so I've gotten way off topic of this video. Um, I might even title it to something different. But what I was originally going to talk about was the difference between reality and... Um, reality and fiction so like in the last of us for example um it's complete fiction you know it's it's uh directed by a director who writes a script and or the script writers who write the script and then the actors the voice actors say it out loud and you know give the grunts and moans and sighs and sneezes and coughs and laughs and giggles to make it sound realistic um as if they were really climbing over a wall um which in some cases they are they do that now you know they have you climb around and jump around and run but they're not really running from a zombie or infected, you know, I mean, they might be running and screaming, looking back at them, and there might be a crew member chasing them to kind of, so they can have actual sounds that sound like a good reaction, but you know what I mean? It's, it's all acting, which is crazy because it's one of those things, it's kind of like a movie where you play it and you feel like, you feel like you're really there and you feel like it's a real life situation, but it's not. And that's what I was um, going to go on about is in the future, you know, this whole virtual reality thing is starting to happen with video games, and it's still a long, long ways away from being, like, you're totally immersed, like that Spy Kids movie where they kind of go into the game, and that, that dude, uh, the main Spy Kid, falls in love with that other chick, and she turns out to just be part of the game, um, but that goes into art artificial intelligence and all that kind of stuff, I'll go into that in a whole different video, um, but that, that would be crazy in the future, where video games are so realistic that they're not even considered games anymore, you know, like, you can't, if you're playing them, you might know you're playing a game, but you cannot distinguish them from reality. 
and that's actually scary. I think that gets to the point where it's not even fun. It's more just like, like if you think people are addicted to video games now, if you get to the point where you can play a game that you can't distinguish from actual reality, say that the game is where you're running through a field and you're uh, happy and you're, you know, you've got no cares, no bills, no kids, no worries. Um, if you can't distinguish it from reality, it feels like you're actually there. It's like a dream almost. Then why would you not play that game? all the time you know i mean because you've got responsibilities in the real world yeah but if you play this game and it's so immersive that you can't even tell that you're that you're not in real life then then you'll probably just be trapped you know you'll just be playing the game forever you know what i mean because it wouldn't be like you're sitting looking at a tv with a controller i'm talking about you know 50 100 years in the future where you sit in some kind of chair or some kind of pod or you put something on your head and you're like kind of like you know now you're in the video game world running around it's like 360 view it's three-dimensional four-dimensional whatever you know real life you can touch things you can feel things you can smell things that would be crazy like it would be awesome for a video game experience but at the same time it's scary to think about if they make movies and video games that real um especially thinking about scary movies if they're so real that you can't distinguish them from reality you can't tell yourself this is a movie you know it's all made up that would be terrifying like that would be a whole new level of terror i don't even want to think about that i personally hate scary movies so um yeah I don't know, you guys. I've touched on a bunch of different topics on this video. I'm going to spend about the next 10 minutes trying to figure out what, what the hell to title it um, because I don't know how to sum up what I've just said. But if you guys have any thoughts or comments on uh, this whole thing that I talked about, um, for sure, leave a comment. Let me know what you think. I replied to all my comments, so um, anything you guys want to say. Um, but other than that, you guys, um, I will have more videos in the future. I have a lot of videos I plan on doing. I just don't have a lot of time. Um, I'm really busy nowadays with work. Work has gotten crazy. So I'm going to try to make videos um, as much as I can. I'm going to try to stockpile, you know, make a whole bunch at once. So that way I can kind of upload um, pretty regularly because right now I'm like every week, every two weeks, every three days. You know, I'm not at a, I'm not at a good schedule. Um, so I want to try to work on that. But I'm almost at... Uh, a thousand subscribers which has been my goal ever since i started youtube which is awesome so i can't thank all of you enough that have subscribed to me um any new people that are watching my videos now um if you guys would like to go ahead and subscribe that that would be awesome i really appreciate it um just to kind of help me reach my goal i'm not trying to become youtube famous i'm not trying to be pewdiepie i just want to hit a thousand and that's all i've ever wanted and when i hit 500 i said you know i'm happy here but a thousand is what i've always wanted and now I'm all the way up to 980 last time I checked, so I'm like 20 away. So I just got to make that one viral video of me, uh, what, driving, like, flipping my car or, or uh, like, tripping over a basketball and hitting my head on a shovel or something like that. I'm just going to do some America's Funniest Home Video shit. I might stick my finger in a baby's mouth like, uh, <laughs> um, what was that one video? Charlie bit my finger. Do some dumb shit like that and then get viral. I don't know. That'll probably get me to 20. All right, guys, but I thank you for watching. I'll catch you next one. All right.